Hello class and welcome to uh, I guess the, the what the first lab um, and I wanted to kind of just do an introductory uh, video on kind of how to identify minerals and the different properties we they have and how to uh, determine those properties so uh, at this point you should have already watched the uh, the lecture video on minerals for for chapter two and then also kind of the little uh, I think that's all I needed you to watch for this so you've watched the lecture video and now you're here and you want to start looking at some of these minerals. So how, how do I, we identify minerals? We use their different physical properties and the main ones are color, streak, uh, hardness, cleavage, and luster, as well as there's some other ones which we'll, we'll talk about, kind of some special things we can use to identify minerals. So for the, for the first one, I wanted to talk about color. And color is kind of a bad property to use to identify some minerals. So here I have a pile of minerals here in front of me. These are all quartz. Quartz can come in a lot of different colors. There's other minerals that are like this. Uh, fluoride is like this. Calcite is like this. Uh, and in fact, those two minerals um, look very or can look very, very similar uh, to the quartz here. But, you know, uh, purple quartz is called uh, amethyst and pink quartz is called uh, rose quartz or just pink quartz. And then really dark quartz is called uh, smoky quartz. And if you find yellow quartz, it's called citrine and et cetera. But I just wanted to exhibit that and say that, hey, color can be sort of a bad thing and it shouldn't be your, your primary uh, way to identify a mineral. Some minerals do pretty much come in one color. Uh, this is galena, it's very silvery and I don't, I can't think of another time when galena just doesn't look silvery like this unless it's covered in some sort of other uh, like a really thin layer of some other mineral that's precipitating out on top of it. But um, so sometimes color can be a little bit helpful, but other times not so much. So the second thing is streak. How do we identify streak? In your little lab kit, you've got a streak plate that looks like this. I'm going to take this piece of hematite here that uh, I know has a reddish brown streak. This is a silvery rock. It doesn't look like it would have a reddish brown streak necessarily. So in order to do the streak, I put my plate down on the table. I don't hold it in my hand. Here's some lab safety tips. If I hold it in my hand and try to streak it, this, this plate could break and it's got sharp, it could have sharp edges and it could cut my hand. So be sure your streak plate is down on the table when you do this and you want to rub it fairly hard on the streak plate until you see that color that comes out uh, when you when you streak it. This doesn't always work. You can't always streak to get a mineral color. Why? Think about that for a second. That's right. Sometimes the minerals are uh, harder than the streak plate. A streak plate has a hardness of, I think, about uh, six, I think, maybe five. So anything that's harder than that really isn't going to provide uh, a streaky color. It's just going to scratch the streak plate and it might look white, if anything. Um, but anyway, streak is sort of the true color of a mineral. A piece of hematite, whether it looks like this or it looks like this, these are both hematite, will always streak the same color. See that? Same color. So that is streaking, and you can wash this off in the sink or whatever. Or you can just turn it on the other side. So that is streaking. Now let's move on to hardness. Uh, here I have a piece of glass. Again, lab safety, and this one's really important. This is where students could actually potentially hurt themselves in the classroom if we were in the classroom, and this is what I harp on. Uh, be careful with your glass. Do not put this in your hand and try to scratch hard on the glass. You will very, you know, if 100 students were to do this, guess what? One of them will end up somehow breaking the glass because they push too hard, or it's a thin piece of glass, or it's just got a faulty, uh, you know, make to it, and it'll break, and then it'll cut your hand. Always, always, always keep the glass down on the table when you test the hardness. So with the hardness, glass is typically what you start with. If you remember the most hardness scale that we talked about, uh, there are some soft minerals. This is one of them. This is gypsum. Gypsum has a hardness of two. I can scratch it with my fingernail. My fingernail is harder than this, this mineral. So... There's that. Talc is even softer than this. If I had a piece of talc, I could scratch it, and you could easily see that uh, I can scratch it with my finger now. 
However, this is kind of the, the main thing we use, uh, or, or the most useful thing we have in our hardness testing arsenal, is a piece of glass. Glass has a hardness of about five and a half, sometimes up to six, so it depends on your piece of glass. I think our glass here is actually fairly hard, up around six. And the hardest mineral you've got in your little kit here, and the hardest mineral of all the sort of the, uh, the rock forming minerals that are really common uh, minerals in the Earth's crust, quartz uh, is the hardest. And I'll just take the tip here, and I will press down hard, and you can see it definitely scratches the glass. And you can see I'm kind of rubbing this off here, uh, and if it'll focus, you hopefully see that that's definitely a scratch. Now let's let's just compare this with the gypsum, which shouldn't be able to scratch the glass. Uh, I'm pressing down hard. Okay, there's something there, but if I just wipe it off really good, you can see there's nothing on that, that glass. So, press hard and double check to make sure you're actually scratching. A lot of students will uh, take minerals and try to scratch the glass, like calcite, definitely harder than the gypsum. And it'll, um, it'll, man, it, it almost feels like it's scratching, but when I look closely, it doesn't scratch. So, that's hardness. Uh, all we really gave you to test for hardness was this, uh, this piece of glass, and uh, we also gave you your fingernails. There are some other tools you can use. You can use a, a, a steel nail, you can use a penny, and you can go look up the hardness for these things. Uh, my suggestion to you would be to, at some point, take all, in fact, I think I require this of you on the lab and canvas, is take all your mineral samples and put them in order of hardness and write down their hardness and you'll figure out what should scratch the glass and, and what doesn't. So that's hardness. Uh, on to the next thing, which is cleavage. So if you remember, cleavage is how a mineral tends to break along weak planes of bonding. Uh, so here's a piece of halite. And you can see this has cubic cleavage. It has cleavage in three different planes. So one, a two, and three. Or also back here, that's the, that's the same plane, right? Same direction. So there's three planes of cleavage in a, a cubic uh, mineral like this. Uh, halite is another one. There's three planes. You can kind of see all the little stair-stepping patterns on here. Uh, if I hit this with a hammer, it'll, it'll explode into a bunch of little cubes. Uh, here is, oop, that's gypsum. Here is, actually gypsum's pretty good too. Here is a feldspar, we'll talk about it later, but this has two planes of cleavage. It's kind of like the cubic ones, but there is a plane here and a plane here. There is not a plane here. It just kind of has a broken fracture to it. There's no plane of cleavage. So that's kind of what two planes of cleavage uh, look like. Uh, here is one with, I'll let you think about it for a second. This is calcite. It's got three planes of cleavage. One, two, three. They're not cubic, it's more rhombic. So it's not at perfect 90 degree angles. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to always be cubic in 90 degrees like this piece of galena. Uh, how about one plane of cleavage? Here's a piece of muscovite. This has one plane of cleavage. It always kind of breaks in this this direction. Here's a piece of muscovite, similar to this, or sorry, biotite, similar to this muscovite. They're both micas. Uh, one plane of cleavage. And these can be thicker. You can see how the biotite here is a little bit thicker. These can be thicker, but you'll notice when you try to mess with them and break them, they always break in this direction, or they try to. Uh, if cleavage is kind of throwing you off, don't worry. It's kind of difficult. There's cleavage in this rock and it will be hard to kind of identify because these are actually multiple crystals that are that are growing together. This is a piece of augite or augite. Um, so don't don't get too bent out of shape with it if it's really hard for you to recognize. Uh, quartz does not have any cleavage and you say what? These are actually crystal faces. This is how the crystal grows. Uh, quartz will break conchoidally which is the same way glass glass breaks. So we'll see here, especially if you look in this area right here where my thumb is, that's got that conchoidal fracture. So if I bust this up, uh, you're not going to see nice flat edges where it breaks. It's going to be very kind of jagged all like this area. So cleavage is confusing. It gets much easier to, to identify the more minerals you look at. 
Um, and the more you understand about crystal faces, it gets more easy to identify. So if you go on and become a geology major, the next class you usually take is mineralogy and you spend an entire semester looking at stuff like this and cleavage will be far easier to identify. So don't worry if it's kind of throwing you off, uh, that's to be expected, but you should hopefully recognize that, okay, this thing breaks in cubes. That's, that's pretty easy, uh, to see and to recognize, and it could potentially help you out. So the last one, which is sometimes the first thing you look at, uh, is luster. And the first two sort of, uh, types of luster you might see are metallic, like this piece of galena. It's very shiny, very silvery. Uh, here is also a, something that is metallic looking. This is pyrite, also known as fool's gold. Uh, that is a metallic luster. This piece of calcite. Yes, it's shiny, but it's not metallic. We call this a vitreous uh, sort of luster. The quartz and the gypsum, these all have kind of a vitreous luster. Um, this piece of hematite. It's kind of sparkly and shiny, but it is metallic. This is still a metallic sort of grayish shiny color. So you can look, go through your minerals that you've got. Hopefully you've got them out in front of you now. Try to figure out which ones are metallic and non-metallic, or maybe they're vitreous. Uh, and there's some that are earthy. So go open up your lab books. You can read about the different types of, uh, of luster. The main one, though, is metallic versus non-metallic. Uh, and then there's other properties that we can look at, kind of special properties. Uh, one is whether something is magnetic or not. This is called magnetite. It is magnetic. Uh, you do not have it in your box, but magnetite can look really, 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 really similar uh, to silver hematite. Um, hematite isn't always sparkly shiny like this. Sometimes it looks a lot like this, uh, a lot like a piece of iron, but it's not really... It's very rarely is it magnetic like magnetite is, and it's definitely not as strong. Like that's, uh, I can almost hold that up with that magnet. Galena, not magnetic. Pyrite, not magnetic. So special property that magnetite has, it attracts a magnet. Uh, other things, major, major, major thing. A lot of geologists will carry around a bottle of acid. If we took this course, uh, in the classroom, you'd get to play with acid, but we did not send you any acid. This is hydrochloric acid. It's the same stuff that's in your stomach. Um, it is 10% hydrochloric acid. So this has been diluted down to just 10% of pure hydrochloric acid. If you want, you've got some acid in your house probably. It's called vinegar. It's about half the power of this hydrochloric acid. You can take your piece of calcite... And you should be able to put some vinegar on there and you should steer it to start to fizz. Let me bring in my special little magnifying glass here. I'm so proud of this. So I'm going to put some, a little drop of acid uh, on the calcite. And you can see it fizzing. You really don't need the, the thing. So calcite is calcium carbonate. And when we put this acid on there, that's the carbonate breaking up into to CO2 um, and some other byproducts. But... Calcite and only calcite will fizz this heavily uh, due to a weak acid like this. And it's a good way to identify it versus quartz or halite or uh, gypsum. Um, you just put some acid on it and, and it will fizz. So some lab safety tips. If you are messing around with acid, this is pretty weak stuff. Like I can put it on myself. Um, I might start to feel it, but it's not going to burn. It's going to be like a tingly feeling. Uh, the real danger here is if I take my hand and now go touch my eyeballs, that will be bad. Uh, so if even if you're messing around with your vinegar, uh, it's good practice. You know, if, if you're doing this with the vinegar, you still don't want to touch your eyes. You will feel it. Uh, so be careful. I'm not saying you need like safety goggles in your house or anything to do this, but uh, just wash your hands. In general, after messing with these rocks, wash your hands. This galena is a lead sulfide. You don't want to start licking and eating this this rock. That would probably be bad. Um, or grinding it up and putting it in your air conditioner system, you know. So so be careful with this stuff. Kind of keep it in under lock and key when you're not messing with it, especially if you have kids. Um, as far as the rest of these, I mean, this is the only one you kind of have to be a little bit concerned with. But for the most part, just, just wash your hands. It's safe otherwise. <clears throat> 
Uh, so that's acid and then the magnet, the magnetic property. Uh, some of these are fluorescent. Some of these, I think it's just this one. If you have a black light, uh, go take your calcite under the black light. It will change fun colors. Um, and I think that's about it as far as an introduction as kind of how to test hardness and the streak. Uh, there's also specific gravity. Basically, this is a super dense mineral. It's a lead sulfide. Lead is very heavy. Uh, and it's not pure lead. Like this is not as dangerous as uh, a lead um, uh, fishing weight. This is bonded with, with sulfur, so it makes it safer. Like I I wouldn't have a problem. Like I could probably take a bite out of this and I, I would not worry too much about it getting into my system because that bonding with the sulfur is uh, very strong. It doesn't react as just like free lead. But anyway. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so from here, I will do individual videos for these minerals each.